Welcome to DOS Geek. We have a banger here for you today. You're going to love it. It's based on GPT for all. If you're not familiar and you've been hearing all the stuff about AI and you're rightfully worried about your privacy and you're rightfully worried about the security of it, well, this should put your mind at ease because GPT for all is for local models. It has other plugins and things available, but primarily for local models. And we're going to play with some open source models and we're going to show you ways that you can start this is a very very simplistic view of what you can do on a much much larger scale but that's how i like to learn things is take them to a really really small easy to uh, comprehend concept and then you can expand that knowledge out as much as you want so what are we going to do we're going to utilize a local we will show you gpt for all in case you don't know we're going to download a local brain model for that and then we're going to create some training material for that brain. On a, in a very uh, simplistic way, we're going to show you how you can start creating some custom GPT AI tools, large language models essentially, for you to utilize locally on your machine without worry about this information going out there onto the web and you know losing all of your privacy and all the stuff that goes with it. So it's such a cool, little uh project we're about to do here and i really hope you enjoy it so let's get into the meat and potatoes as they say of doing this as i've done recently with some other videos you seem to enjoy it i have a companion guide on orionsguard.com that goes with this video so that you can basically follow along cut and paste all of that good stuff which should help tremendously with you not having to sit there and hit pause for the various commands I have obviously done all of this already to make sure that it all works, but we're gonna walk through it here together so you kind of understand all the concepts and why we're doing each step. You have your prerequisites of what you need here. Now, you don't have to have Arch Linux. I'm using Arch Linux. Most, if not all of these steps, I believe will work in any distro with maybe a slight different twist. So uh, if you're on a different distro, don't worry about it. You should be able to quickly uh, adopt these commands for your distro without much work here. So the first thing we need is to get ourselves GPT for all. If you're not familiar, GPT for all is freaking awesome. It is just a awesome interface GUI. Why does it only have three and a half stars? I have no clue. That's ridiculous. That is really ridiculous. I'm gonna have to write a review and pump that up because it, it's really, really good. Uh, people may be trying it with really slow machines and things. Even on this beast of a machine that I built, I actually had two GPTs running simultaneously, and it ended up shutting down Vivaldi, saying I ran out of memory. I was running OBS at the same time, too, uh, so there's that. But the point is, GPT for all is awesome, and you can get it as a flat pack. Now, you may be able to get it through your software store as a flat pack, like I'm doing here with Discover. I'm on KDE Desktop and Arch, Discover comes installed, and I can install it right here. Or you can do it through uh, your distro. Maybe available as a snap as well if you're on Ubuntu or something like that, but you can also just enable Flatpak support. Okay, so it's licensed under MIT. You're gonna install GPT for all. It's from Gnomic AI. This is what it looks like. Once that is installed, well, you're mostly there already. We're, we're almost done. Just that. You've got GPT for all. So let me show you around GPT for all. When you first open this up, you're going to see a welcome menu. It will also give you some options of whether you want to share anonymous data or not. You do not have to. Um, and then the next thing you can go in here and you'll have chats. You'll have the option to choose a model, but in your case, you won't have any models here because we need to download some brains for this thing. So the first screen you're gonna come to is probably gonna look exactly like this when you click on models. And you can read about each of these models, which is super cool. So they'll tell you what license they're under. They'll let you know if it's for uh, commercial use or not. They have parameters, how much RAM is required, and the file size. These brains do require a lot of space, just a heads up. In this case, the one that I want you to play with most, I think would be, you know, Llama, DeepSeek uh, are awesome. And this one here, Mistral, is the one we're going to use in our instructions, uh, which I've had a lot of fun with. Okay, so what we're doing differently than just installing GPT for all and giving it some brains, because at this point, you could just come into chat, choose your model, Mistral, and start talking. 
that would work perfectly fine now. And now you've got a cool local AI model. That's freaking awesome. But we want to take it one step further. We want to actually start giving it information to train on. And the idea, even though this is a sample of what you can do, I need people to understand. I'm not trying to say the 17 articles I'm about to load into this from orionsguard.com is enough to effectively train a model on uh, for it to have enough information. But I'm showing you the concept so that you can start collecting vast amounts of data in the thing that you're researching that you can attach to your local model. I'm showing you how to do that. And that's the key piece of this also because chat showing you GPT for all is awesome. See, I almost did the chat GPT thing again. It's It's got me all the way. Anyways. Uh, once you've do downloaded the model, so when you go here to your models and we go to uh, Minstrel, you're going to click install or download here, and then it will be available to you. We now need to get wget. If you do not have wget and Pac-Man, whatever your service is, it would be something like this. Um, of course, you need sudo in there, but it's just a command that allows you to get stuff. Um, it's very useful. If you don't have it, I highly suggest you get it. Then we're going to make some directories over here. We're going to CD into that directory. Since I've already made the directory with the MKDIR, we're just going to C into it here. It looks like I got a couple. And then what we're going to do from here is use this wget command. What this is going to do when we run this is it's going to download everything from orionsguard.com. Now, if you do this to a giant site, you may get flagged. You may even get banned from their site. So I do not recommend using something like this on a huge site. In my case, we have about 17 articles it's going to download. So if you want to test with the Ryan's Guard, please feel free. Be kind to it. Uh, but feel free to grab 17 articles from a Ryan's Guard with this simple extension here. And that will essentially get you everything that you need uh, again to continue with the rest of this tutorial and if you go into here once you do that you're going to have another folder and then when you ls into that you're going to see basically it's downloaded a bunch of html files and that text.txt is just a test file that i put into there when i was learning about all this stuff because it will not read html files so just know that that's why we need the next tool we're going to install called pandoc and what pandoc allows us to do that command's all messed up, isn't it? It would be Pac-Man, not Pac-Amon, Pokemon. Um, what this command is going to allow you to do is install uh, Pandoc, and Pandoc is going to convert our HTML files into TXT files. So again, we're going to make another directory here called orionsguard.txt. So once you've made that directory, we're going to CD into not that new directory we created, but we're going to CD into where all the HTML files are because we're about to run a script off of this to convert them. And it's going to send them into that TXT directory we created. So now we're going to take this. We are going to cut and paste it as it is. You don't need to utilize Visual Studio Code or write Python or anything. You're going to cut and paste this directly into the terminal. Once you run that, that's just going to convert all these HTML files into txt files that's all it does so let me show you what that's going to look like here so if we go to that once you've run that we go in here to the text version and we ls you can see that all of those same files that were html are now txt files so we converted them perfect now you may want to check out one more tool called flat seal what Flat Seal allows you to do is manage permissions for flat packs. And because I installed this as a flat pack, we're going to want to be able to uh, control potentially where GPT can get its information from. So if we launch this, we can go to GPT for all and we can share or decide to remove access that it has to certain things. I wouldn't remove anything that's kind of default here. But for instance, if you were training on a lot of different files in a system, you may want to temporarily give it access to your user files here so they can find that stuff. That's up to you. Just letting you know that Flat Seal is also an awesome product where you can set specific permissions. I did not have to do that 
to run this. Um, so just keep that in mind. Okay, so what do we have now? I'm glad you asked. What we have now is a bunch of TXT files that we can start training this tool on. So we have a new chat here. We're gonna choose our model, the Mistral Instruct. We have these local docs. We're going to go ahead and add in here, Orion's Guard, we're gonna call it. And then we're gonna browse to the TXT folders that we created, the ones that are text file. And we're gonna do create collection. And what it's going to do here is it's going to start embedding that data from those TXT files into the backend. And then we'll be able to utilize that to train our models with, which is freaking awesome. Now, one of the things that I noticed that's a downfall of this GPT for all as a flat pack is it does seem to lose some of its settings from time to time. So you may want to try to either grab a local version of GPT or maybe that's why people are rating it with like three and a half stars because it is annoying to kind of have to reload this stuff um, every other time or whatnot. But in any case, once you come back, you're going to see over here, if you don't see it, click on local docs. You're going to see over here we have our Orion's guard. We can check it. And now I have an example here where we could tell it to write utilizing those files, right? So right in the style of Orion's guard. Now, what would I use this for? Well, 17 files, probably not a whole lot. But let's say I had hundreds of articles that I had written over time. That starts to get better, where I could start training it on my voice. So it will start writing articles. I can give it the key concepts, the beginning, middle, end, what I want to cover, and then hit enter. And essentially, I could have a tool that could start writing articles in my specific voice, the way that I normally write articles. Now, where you could also utilize this is in your code. So if you have a bunch of code that you want to download into this local model that you could train it on, it could start coding like you as well, which becomes much, much more useful for you in the future. Now you can see that it utilized that and it gave us sources saying that it was using some of the TXT files to come up with its solution here. Now, different models have different capabilities. If I went into the DeepSeek one, this would probably take a little longer, let's do a new chat instead, to actually run, but it will give me different results. And that's the point is you wanna test with the various models. And again, you do the same thing and see if you get a different result in them. But this is just a super fun and cool way to begin understanding how to train models and how to make AI far, far more useful for you in the future. Uh, I love your faces. And until next time, I hope this helps you. Let me know in the comments. Get out there and fill your brains.